Uh, Gragas, as you mentioned, take Could that away Darius, from Zephdar. Yeah. Maybe Darius as well, because Lonely Kids look so strong. There you go. There's the adaptation. There's the Gragas taking that away from Zephdar. I think he's just performed above and beyond SE7, who's looked really, really shaky this series so far. The first game on the job, and he didn't really do too well. The second game as well. There's the high priority still on the Darius, getting Lonely Kid on that comfort pick. Now, do you take away the Ziggs? from um, Ricks, do you kind of fall into that bait? Instead, they stick with the mm. Oriana, which is really, really interesting. So now Ricks can have both Ziggs and Gragas in their sister, you know, in their pile if they really want to. But I don't know whether you still need to play Ziggs here. Like, I, yes, Ziggs is good. Like, don't get me wrong. I think Ziggs has been a really good pick in the meta right now and absolutely is S tier, but yeah. Game Lord have shown they can wow. play around it. Game Lord have shown they know how to to, to at least play to neutralize a lot of that Ziggs uh, and without without was, that strength. I like the Garen pickup. I was pick about to mention. I was about to mention. Do you just take away the Garen because the Garen is such a big problem at the moment? And Excandles already mentioned it. You take away the Garen away from Ruiz. You take away that beefy front line. Now, what do you do on the side of Game Lord? Do you go? Wow, you just go <laughs> vain instead. I love these drafts. It's just like you pick Garen, we pick vain. You pick oh. Ziggs, we pick Garen, and now we're in a situation where, you know, you have Garen, you have Gragas, now you have Vayne, which is going to leave probably, or is it going to be Oriana mid? Is it going to be Vayne mid? We've already seen it Do from you... Stitch as well. It's like, wow. Does this now wow. force out different bans? Like, does this force Rix to ban at least Lulu and potentially Yumi as well? True. Because... Like it, it now, the problem was for for Ricks, they didn't want to pick the the their support because I think they'd already had Thresh at that point, so they couldn't look at doing like the Vayne Lulu composition. Or does it mean Ricks still stay with what they were banning before in the second phase, where they were banning Hester's engaged champions? Alistair was banned away. There it goes. So they're going to take that one off the board as well. But that does op open the opportunity for Game Lord to last pick an Enchanter support, depending on if they go jungle on four, and then they can fit their bot lane how they want to. Yeah, exactly. They they can have that flex way. They can just go for a jungler on uh, on R four, and then R five. They can decide what support they want to, depending on how Rix's lineup um, mm -hmm. does. But now this last ban from Rix is not going to be Z. I was just looking down actually at my notes because yeah. I've been keeping track of it. It's not going to be the Z anymore uh, because we already have. Either mid lane Vayne or mid lane Orion. It's going to be one of the two. So do you just ban away the Nami? Maybe it could potentially be an option, and it is. Yeah, they're just going to ban away the Nami. So again, more focus bans on Heste. I think he's been so so strong on all of these supports, and it's getting banned away. But now, do you actually pick up Thresh now on the side of Game Lord? Because Thresh has not sure. been picked by Rix, and it's kind of actually the only real support that's left. Unless you're going for something like a Lulu, like a Yumi instead. There's so many possibilities in this draft still. That would be my guess, is that you pick jungle oh, wow. here. Rix will pick up Thresh at this point. Yep. We'll talk about Zephyr's Lee Sin in a moment. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think Rix pick up Thresh in this rotation with, of course, their jungle or, or, or top lane matchup. Set is available if they want it. And then Game Lord gets to, to read it. It's like, do you want the Lulu? Do you want something like a Yumi, which will provide crowd control as well? Or do you opt towards like the engaged champions? Depends on whether they're putting that Leona. Uh, I was going to say Leona is an engaged champion. There's Ooh. the jungle coming through of the Vi to lock down Vayne. Very different draft in this game. And this is a little bit more towards what Viv were playing against uh, Game World yesterday. I'm not too sure. Of this. Is this the first time we've seen SC7's Vi? I think we've seen Zephyr like pick it, it up before, but I feel like it's the first time we've seen a Vi. So he, he's not going to be playing one of them, you know, flashy champions that we've seen from him, like Lee Sin, like Karzix, like Jarvan. He's just like, okay, I, I know that maybe I'm not performing up to my standards. So let's just pick the Vi. Let's get the lockdown and a Brom coming through instead of that Thresh. So it, sometimes Brom can have bad matchups against some um, enchanters, normally Nami, but that's already banned away. But now this is the interesting part. What support is Hesse going to pick? Is it going to be Yumi? Is it going to be Lulu? Is it going to be another engage support? We'll have to wait and find out. There's only 10 seconds less stress. And yeah, we're, we're going to get it draft. figured out. There's the disengage of that Braum to be able to stop it. It is there the Lulu, as expected. One of those picks that really just ramps Vayne's damage and survivability up through the rest of the game. Like, as soon as you get that shield on Vayne in the late game and, and start popping the ultimate, it's so much harder to kill Vayne than we saw from Rix, where, where Snitch, he was in fights and doing damage, but as soon as one piece of crowd control landed, suddenly Vayne was under a lot of threat. With the Lulu, that's hardly as easy to do and she's even got oriana shields as well 
the thing is now is that Rex has kind of, I, I guess, fallen into the vein trap in a way because they're, you know, their B4 and B, B5, their fourth and fifth pick are both kind of tanks as well. Vayne mm -hmm. Vi is like a kind of off tank, but Brom is also a tank. Vayne does well into pretty much all of these champions. The only, obviously, champion she's going to struggle against is the Ziggs. But if he can tumble around, if he can jump on top of Doom, if Redemption can jump on, or Breeze, it might even be on, on Vayne mid. But if they can get on top of Doom, if they... Well, now, like... Game Lord of five headed Rix into picking yeah. the picks that they had to face in game number one. So it's going to be redemption on the vein. This is a very different setup to the first game, as it's going to be dual lane vein against the Oriana mid for Ruiz. A little bit more traditional in the way that you'd look at a League of Legends draft, but uh, Wild Drift, of course, we have seen this swap up. And that's Doom, as close as it's going to get. As Ooh. Doom gets dropped low, now gets tumbled on and puts more damage down, as Clue wasn't in the lane. And this is one of the things is uh, Doom can expect to get harassed as soon as Clue shows elsewhere on the map. I, I was about to say the Redemption and Heste are going to struggle in this lane because Doom just outranges, can just poke down Vayne, but Clue for some reason was roaming. I think he just put a ward in the river, but, but when you do that at the start and you just leave Doom alone level one, it, it, why... What are they thinking? Like, you're just giving Vayne and Lulu a free start to lane phase, and this is where Vayne and Lulu is really, really weak. You don't have the range, you don't have the damage in the early game, and now mm -hmm. you can see at the moment that Clue's still roaming and Doom's all by himself, which means that Redemption and Heste, they could just farm up and they could just play passive. They could got really nothing to worry about. Well, this is how Clue has been playing out the early game. We've seen it a lot from Hester as well. I think we'll see it less in this game because of the way that Lulu is not so uh, not so useful Ooh. on the roams. SE7 showing does not get the vision in the bush at first, drops the ward very smartly knowing that Zephter could be there. So the plant reveals enough with that ward in combination to know that they can't go aggressive. And this is the first game so far that Random hasn't died to Lonely Kid. We'll see whether that <laughs> keeps going, but uh, like Lonely Kid has walked into lane and being like, ha, huh, you're the one top of the tier lists. Okay, we'll see how that goes. And Lonely Kid has won out 1v1 a, a number of times. I think Lonely Kid has been a, been a, the player that's been like, okay, you know, mm -hmm. we, we've seen your tier list show next scoundrel. We, <laughs> we've seen random at the top. I'm about to prove you wrong. But to be honest, we've been speaking so much about the dual lane. We we didn't actually pick up the random is now on the Gragas instead. So yeah. it's not the Gragas jungle is going to be random, which he's gone for electrocute. So he might be building kind of full AP in a way. It will probably be a little bit tankier with like Rod of Ages potentially, uh, but you'll probably still see the death camp. Um, so it won't be as one shot potential as maybe Zephyr's Gragas is what you've seen in previous games because mm -hmm. he still wants to get a little bit tanky so he doesn't get you know died by the uh the Darius each time as well so i i wonder if that's to one shot the vein <laughs> like because the thing mm -hmm. is if if lulu's uh, shields and heals go off like this garen won't kill the vein the gragas won't pop the vein like instantly so you have to make that damage go on before lulu can ever save her right like you don't have the consistent damage over time from this composition to to fight vein in long prolonged fights uh, they just they just want to burst the vein. That's it. You have yeah. the Vi ulti, you have the Garen ulti, you have the Gragas ulti on top of that. Their, their, their task, I mean, I feel like it's the same with both comms. Game Lord just wants to burst down Doom. <laughs> Everyone on side of uh, Rix just wants to burst down Redemption. It's just to do with these two dual, dual lane carries, which I think is a, a perfect story and a perfect setup, I think, for this... Uh, for this entire series is I feel like the meta at the moment has been so much there's been so much talk about this duo lane there's been so much about mm -hmm. these AP carries about ADCs and the current meta and especially Doom rotate um changing from jungle back down to um the duo lane and redemption as well who had a bit of a shaky start to uh to 2021 but coming into 2022 has definitely looked a lot more comfortable and now it's going to be you know the late game carries now on the, in the duo lane to see which one will come out on top but as you can see random's gone for the rod of ages no surprise he just wants to be a little bit tankier get more combat stats so he can be a little bit fine in the uh in the Baron Lane, it's a little bit of a, a different build. Interesting enough, Ruiz has gone for Archangel Star first mm -hmm. um, in the mid lane. You normally see Luna's Echo as the first item that you normally go for Manifold Band in the runes, just so you're not struggling a lot on on um, on mana, but this makes me think that Game Lords are not really looking for the early game fight because Luna's Echo normally has better stats and Archangels normally allows you just quickly scale into the mid and late game. So maybe Game Lords so... are not looking for this dragon fight. Saying that, they are trying to take this Scuttle Crab and they are 
posturing themselves around this dragon. Can I can I ask a question on that before we get into this fight? Is that perhaps an indicator that Ruiz's build might be completely different and might opt towards a protect the vein kind of composition? Maybe, We've seen yeah. it on Oriana in PC, where you go way more towards utility and based around the shields. Is, is that something that Archangels might hint towards? Um, it, it could be in a way. I still feel like he he's still going to build like you know Ludens afterwards. He's still mm -hmm. going to go for the for the same sort of build. I think he just. I, I think Ruiz just wants to quickly get that the, the shielding for himself as soon as possible mm. because there's there's a lot of one shot potential on the on the side of Rex. We already mentioned it. The Vi Ultimate in Gar uh, Garen Ultimate, Gragas Ultimate. So maybe he's just thinking, okay, we're not going to be fighting as much in the early game because to be fair, on the side of Game Lord, you got Lulu, you got Vayne, you got Oriana. You do not want to fight in the early game because your champions are not really that strong when it comes to that first dragon. So again, yeah. I I think it's just a, an adaptation in build to kind of realize the game state that they're in and realize that. The, the team comp that they that he has as well. So he's like, okay, I'm just gonna go Archangels first. I'm gonna spam all my abilities and try and clear this mid wave, and then I can get that Cerus embrace as soon as possible. So I can get the shield and I can just keep spamming my abilities. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll track his itemization as we go through the game. Recalls coming out, so it'll give us a little idea of the next step in his build. As uh, we have seen a little bit of a swap up, at least from the side of Ricks moving their dual lane to the middle lane, of course, as uh, is standard. I think giving this vein as much on the side lane as you can is going to be helpful. Vein's the one that you're, you're kind of like trying to get as much. Uh, gold onto throughout this game as is pretty standard and no real rush yet on the objectives. When yeah. was the last time we have been in a game at six minutes where both Dragon and Rift Herald are still up? Uh, I, again, I think this is Game Lord's game plan because there, there's so much for the late game. Lulu, mm -hmm. Vayne, Oriana, but now we're saying that they're going to start this dragon. But look, they, they don't want to contest it. They know they can't team fight. I really, really like this from Game Lord because they know that they can't. Re they probably won't win a team fight in the early game. Mm -hmm. And now it's Rex. This is what I wanted to see from Rex. Rex are the ones that are going to start this dragon. And now we're going to yeah. see who comes out on top. Yeah, Rex have to force it a little bit. Otherwise, uh, you know, Game Lord uh, are not going to get drawn away. At least as long as they can take the objectives, maybe they can make it work for themselves. 2,000 health on the dragon. Mega Inferno Bomb is going to eat through Game Lord. That's a great start to Lonely this kid. fight as Random has got Lonely Kid locked in his sights. And that should be the first kill of the game going over to SE7 as they're trying to kite back down onto the dragon as the first kill for Redemption is going to get this vein going. And it's actually Zephta that has taken the dragon for Game Lord. And Game Lord managed to come away with a kill and the dragon from that. It looked like a very tense scenario. Uh, perfect from Game Lord. They got they got the dragon. They lost one person for it. They got the infernal dragon as well. So we we spoke about the late game already for Game Lord. That late game has just gotten even scarier now for Rex because you're going to get in uh, bonus AD for the Vein for the Oriana for this Lulu as well. Actually, early teleport. teleport. Holy wow! That's early to, for that enchant as Hester drops low oh, and in comes the fight. As Redemption's actually the one to pick up the kill. They're going to eat through Rex. This has gone horribly Redemption wrong for Rex as the execution doesn't pick it up onto Snitch, but they've done it. They've cleaned up. That's an ace off the teleport. Game Lord in game three are going to make their way closer and closer to Barcelona. They get Rift Herald. They stole the Drake. They've destroyed Rix early on. Rex, what are you doing? What is going on? The Game Lord just, they came back from their base. Rix didn't didn't um, reset as well. Doom had to buy Teleport because they really wanted to try and get this Rift Herald because they know they already lost the Dragon. So we're like, oh, we're going to trade in objectives. Now you've lost the Rift Herald, you lost the Dragon, you lost two towers. This is 7,000 gold lead stress. And this early on, and we're going to look back at his replay. Look, Clue's basically 1 HP. SC7's 1 HP. He's going in by himself. Random gets caught afterwards as well. Look at Redemption over the wall. Flashes onto Doom. Doom, you're not going to be able to do anything this game. Condemn it against the wall as well. And Game Lord are absolutely running over this game. I feel like Rick's just, they they tried to get a they're gonna consolation fight. prize. Hester is, is, is actually, they're trying to back away from this as Snitch and the Mega Inferno Bomb on top of it. There's the first kill oh. going over to Snitch as they can try and do it. Rick's are going to try and steady themselves in this matchup, forced out of stasis from Redemption. They'll back away and Rick's, Maybe that's enough to slow him down at least a little bit, but whew, this game has started to get blown wide open by Game Lord. Oh my, Game Lord just, they, they know they're in the right hands now. Lonely Kid is going yeah, on to Doom. It's one versus two as Lonely Kid is trying to get the execute oh. and does. And is that enough to spell Double. the end of Rix's upper bracket run? Snitch is bleeding. It doesn't matter as that Zephyr Sonic waving through for another kill. Eight kills to two. We are so far ahead from Game Lord right now. They have got a commanding lead in this game.
Ricks are completely falling apart. This is not the Ricks that we saw against Game Lord. We, I spoke about it a little bit at the start of the show. I was saying that Game Lord sometimes with the early rotations can get these early advantages. But Ricks, they, they're just trying to keep forcing. Look, they're forcing fights over and over again. And it's just not working There's out for still them. Still four members of Game Lord here. Like, this is a fight Ricks are taking to try and defend their tower. But it's four versus three. And you're not in the advantage position here, Ricks. You are down a hell of a lot of gold right now. And they are continuing continuing to try and fight. They are desperate to try and get back in this game. They are just going to scrap and try and make it work. They put the damage down. Have they got the first kill on to Zepta? They have. In comes Doom's Mega Inferno Bomb, and that's Lonely Kid going to fall again. And are they somehow going to defy the odds? They have dropped below from this fight. Can they keep Redemption alive on the side from Game Warden? How the hell have Ricks started to turn this Doom Lands the Bouncing Bomb? The Shield oh, is going to keep Redemption for a moment. He's going to tumble away. He does get the Silver Balls to proc on the third one. Gets a double kill before he drops and it's Ricks tidying up the end of the fight. How, in God's name, have Ricks managed to hold on in this fight? 8,000 gold down. They ace Game Lord in game three, and maybe we're not done yet. <laughs> what is this fiesta? Zephyr here trying to catch up random. The Lunar Ultimate went on top as well, but again, it's him that this time that gets caught out. The Ultimate from Doom didn't really do too much, but look at Redemption. He gets caught by the Gragas Barrel. He gets taught, caught by Explosive Cast, and the Ruiz is just on the back line. He can't really do it too much. The overextension here from Game Lord is just. Yeah, they tried to take the tower. They couldn't take the tower. Rix came back from the base, and I feel like it's just a complete opposite of what Rix were doing. Rix were like, okay, we're going to try and overextend. We're going to try and take the Rift Herald. This time it was Game Lord, the ones that were actually overextended with low health bars. And wow, I mean, we're still at a 4,000 gold lead, and I feel like Game Lord is still in the driver's seat this game. But what Rix is started going the dragon. on? There? Oh. Like, Ricks have started the Dragon as they know that they, from that last fight, at least Game Lord have to be thinking, okay, can we really take it? As Doom looked to recall out there, gotta look down the summoner spells, there's no flash available as Random does get caught for a moment, but the explosive cask is gonna deny everything. Game Lord may very well just look to take the Dragon for themselves, they need to buy time for Random to get healthy. He's taken the Honey Fruit, doesn't have his ultimate, doesn't have his flash, Ricks are gonna back themselves away. They're gonna start the Rift Herald though at the same time. Game Lord will be able TP to make again. it. <laughs> Doom using that TP to advantage. He spent money on it earlier. May as well try and use it now as Lonely Kid. Gonna get denied by the minefield. In goes SC7. Hex second burn goes through. They can't quite get the kill onto Hester. And maybe it is enough to start this fight for Game Lord as Doom is very low. Oh, Zephyr's gonna pick off the kill. And that's exactly what Game Lord needed to shut Ricks out of this fight around Rift Herald. It's gone back in favor of Game Lord, and that has to be the killing blow from here. Rix, they fought for just a moment longer than we were expecting, but now Game Lord are going to run them down. SC7 forced back away, and Rix just have not been able to find themselves any kind of lead in this game. Rift Herald will eat through their objectives. Zephyr jumping in onto the backline, kills off Doom as well, and wow, this is... This is a completely different Game Lord that we have seen from before. This is the Game Lord that we were kind of expecting, really, coming into the Game Lord versus Rex before. This is not the same Game Lord that we saw lose two games against Viv yesterday. The momentum of winning three games in a row. We're going to be seeing this replay back. They tried to catch out Heste, but with the ultimate still there. And Redemption's just in the backline. He's completely fine. Look at Zephyr in the backline. Jumps onto Clue. Lands a, a, a Q onto Doom on the backline. And he is just running around Ricks like... Like, they're absolutely nothing. And uh, mm. again, I, I kind of have to bring up the point where, where this jungle matchup, Zephyr versus SE7. SE7 has really not had an... Oh, I don't know. Is there a disconnect, potentially? Uh... I hope Redemption well, uh, has not disconnected. Is okay. We'll we'll get an update on that. He is oh, now he's now moving. moving again. Yeah, um, he's I, I have to update something just from 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 the last team fight. I, I I thought that Game Lord had taken Rift Herald at the end of the fight. It actually despawned during the fight. So that's maybe a slight amount uh, of good fortune in Rix's favor that that Rift Herald wasn't pushed through to a Nexus. There would have or, or you know an inhibitor from that. I think that would have been a really tough situation for Rix to to stabilize from. So important that objective did not go over to Game Lord and Rix, this is like fingertips situation, holding on by the the tiniest of margins here because this gold lead should be insurmountable. Like at this point of the game, yeah. two dragons down with a vein that is scaling four, one and five. If Redemption plays this out well and, and gets himself some some extra life steal and, and towards the Guardian Angel, there should be almost no way with a Lulu and an Oriana that Rix can turn this game back around.
Uh, there should have been. I mean, we said that after the first game, though. No, we did. I mean, <laughs> we said that after the first game where there was a vein that was really, really far ahead. Oh, and in Rex won a fight. Oh, SC7, Assault and Battery goes through until only Kid forces the flash over. Oh, that overhead was exactly what they needed with the Shockwave. And Rix, this is a five versus three in game load. I'm going to say, take it. Bring on Lonely the fight. Kid. This Lonely Kid is going to get dropped before the execution goes off. Doom has died on the backside to Zephyr as Rix are trying to back themselves away. They've lost SC7. It's That's only Baron. Snitch and it's only Clue as Baron is available. Zefter has been on fire this series and he is absolutely helping Bricks get destroyed by Game Lord. Oh, Zefter showing that his lease in, he doesn't pick it too much, but when he picks it, he can absolutely dominate. And it was Ricks that were trying to start the team fight, and they've been fight starting fights over and over again, but they didn't realize that Lonely Kid still have flash. He's gonna flash over the wall, the shockwave into the apprehend as well, and Lonely Kid survived for such a long time. And you can see Zefter on the flank, right into the back line, onto Doom, and there's nothing that Doom could do against Zefter. Allow it just Zefter being able to jump, flash everything on the, onto do and there's nothing you could do and that's going to be barren now over to the side of game lord and look at this ten thousand gold lead now for mm. game lord look at the gold leads as well two thousand gold lead mid one thousand gold lead in the barrel lane four thousand gold lead in the jungle Sefta is game running lord. away with this game game lord came into this weekend one game one against Rix, lost the next two games, found themselves down 0-2 against Viv yesterday, and are now 2-0 and zero with Baron Buff with a fed composition that can play through the late game. And SC7 is trying to push out the side lane. Game Lord have done everything they can to fight back from the brink of being eliminated in yesterday's series against Viv, and there has been no stopping them ever since. This is the Game Lord we told you about coming into game one. It took them a little while to get there, but they are looking to close this game. Mega Inferno Bomb will clear the wave in mid lane, but it's not quite enough to hold on. There's Super Minions pushing through, or Baron Minions, I should say, through the bottom side. Super Minions now through mid lane is going to be enough to ramp this up. Game Lord, they have to be careful that they aren't dropping too low off this. Of course, Rix will have the defender's advantage of being able to heal up, and that means Game Lord will be happy with what they've done. They can't really force this bot lane turret down without another wave of minions. They will get it quickly and then back away to the dragon and reset. Yeah, they're going to reset for this dragon, this ocean dragon that's coming up, or maybe they might stay. They're really, really low, though, to be honest. This is maybe a it's bit risky. of an overstep by Game Lord, but I, they have to defend the base. Ricks have to defend mm -hmm. the base. You can see uh, both Clue and Stitch both going back to base instead, and wow. Game Lord, they've broken the mid inhibitor. I think the bot lane inhibitor was like 100, 100 HP. I don't yeah. know if observers can go and check that. I think it's like 100 it HP, is. so maybe that will be like something that they can look at later on at trying to get, but... That, that's one inhibitor and potentially even two inhibitors now as well with the Elder Dragon. Game Lord, they have three dragons. Baron's coming up probably very soon as well. That second Baron that could potentially end this game. And I'll be totally honest with you, Stress. I, I do not see a way Rex coming back into this game. Game Lord have an, <laughs> a crazy, crazy lead. Yeah, it, I totally agree with you. We've crested 10k, but game one, we were in the reverse situation. <laughs> Doom just picked up his Rabbit and Seth Cap. He invested early gold into that teleport, and that has been eating into his damage ever since, and it did not pay off. For Rix, there is one more fight left in the tank. If they do not kill Redemption and do not stop Game Lord from getting this next Baron of the game, it is all but over. Zephter, he's had an amazing series, but he is the one potentially caught out. Winter's Bite is going to force out the kick as Zephter gets caught by the Glacial Fissure. That's Zephter going to get his GA. Look at Baron Lane, but his though. top lane, Baron Lane, Game Lord are looking to try and end as all of the damage comes down onto Zephter. There's a teleport coming in from Doom. Is that the overextension that Game Lord had had to do for Rix to get back? into this the damage has gone down the kill onto snitch and ricks have been able to resettle themselves but they lose the inhibitor in the top side bot lane will be fallen with a the gust of wind will push that over if the minions ever get there and ricks may very well be three inhibitors down but the important pick on sefta means no baron available for game lord yeah, they're not going to be able to take the Baron. Zephyr is still dead for 25 seconds, but also Snitch is dead as well. So it's a four versus four situation. Do, do Game Lord look to just go over to the bot lane just to attack it? Because when three inhibitors are down, it's so, so hard to come back on. When you're having multiple Baron up there. And look, look, you can see Redemption now. He's moving. He's actually going to go to the mid lane. You said, what? What is Redemption doing here? I thought he was going to go down to the dual lane. He might actually get caught as well. SC7 and Glue are there. Yeah, Mercy Assault and Battery forces the stasis, but it's as good 
good as crowd control. Shockwave comes through. The rest of the team is there as Ruiz is trying to Did desperately save heels? him. The shield, everything is keeping redemption alive. He's still here from being caught and it's forced Ricks into a fight that they cannot afford to take. The, the guardian angel from SC7 as Lonely Kid rips into the back line. Clue drops the apprehend oh. as Game Lord are going to apprehend this game from Ricks. It's all Game Lord. Game Lord have only lost Scepter and with three members of Ricks down, Game Lord bounced back from being 0 2 down yesterday to advance themselves to the finals in Barcelona and prove that Game Lord are lords of the European Open bracket. Oh my god, not one of us predicted this. No one would have expected. I would. Blame Stuart. I, I, <laughs> I will happily say that no one ever thought that coming into this series, Game